Hello everyone. Today we will be talking about statistics um, and some of these statistics you've probably heard of before so it'll be a nice refresher and some of these um, statistics that we're going to be talking about will be new uh, so we'll kind of combine the new with the old and you're going to be in great shape. So let's fill in some definitions first. So when we talk about statistics uh, they're nu ner numerical values used to summarize and compare sets of data. And then we have two types that we're going to talk about, measures of central tendency. And what that means is kind of exactly how it sounds. It, it is used to represent the center or middle of the data set. And then we have what are called measures of dispersion. You know, when you're dispersing something, you're kind of spreading it out. You're you know, giving it to people. If I'm dispersing candy to you guys, I'm taking the candy and I'm giving it to you guys. Um, so measures of dispersion tells you how far apart the data is, you know, how spread out the data is. So let's look at the central tendencies first. We have mean and You've probably heard the mean referred to as the average before. Um, and what you do, you're going to sum up or add the numbers. So sum of the numbers and then divided by n. So if we have five numbers, we're going to add up these five numbers and then divide by five. That is how you calculate the mean or average of a set of numbers. And the statistical way to write that is this little x bar right here. That means average. So then if we have this data set here, the mean would be adding up all these values. and dividing by how many values there are. The median is the middle number when the numbers are written in order. If you think about driving your car and there is that median in some of the, you know, some of the busier roads, there's that median, that's right in the middle. And again, it's important that the numbers are um, in order. Um, if n is even, so that means like if we have a set of four numbers, you know, it's hard to find that middle because there's two middles in that instance. You know, I'm a, I was a middle child until my sister was born and now there's four of us. So now there's two middle children. But when you have a set of numbers or a set of data, you would average the two middle numbers. And mode is the number that occurs the most, mode, most. That's the way I kind of remember it. We have three M's, mean, median, mode, mode, and most. Median, that middle number, like when you're driving on the road, and that means the mean must be the average. So those are the um, measures of central tendency. Now, measures of dispersion the first one we're going to talk about is the range. And the range is the difference between the highest and lowest value. So that will tell you how far the data is spread out. Now the new one that you probably have not heard of is called standard deviation. And the definition of that, it's the typical difference between a data value and the mean or average. The symbol for that is this little kind of weird looking R or weird looking zero with a tag on the top. That's the, that's, uh, the symbol for standard deviation and it's pronounced sigma or lowercase sigma. You may remember that when we talked about um, summation notation, we have the 
capital sigma, that big looking um, thing that looked like that. But we're not going to use that right now. So this symbol is for the standard deviation. Now the SAT does talk about standard deviation in some of their problems. And what they are expecting you to know is that a high standard deviation means the data is spread out. You know, think about the age of the teachers in your school. They're, the age is pretty spread out of, of the teachers at, at your school. So that would be um, a set of data that has a high standard deviation. You, know, you have some young teachers, you have some middle-aged teachers, and you have some uh, older teachers. So that data is pretty spread out. A low standard deviation means the data is close together. So think about the age of students in your school. Okay, the typical high school student could be anywhere from the age of you know, 14 all the way up to 18. So that would have a very low standard deviation. And then the last definition is going to be an outlier, a value that is much larger than or much smaller than most of the other values in the data set. So, you know, going back to the example of students' age in school, like I said, most of them them fall between 14 and um, 18, but if we get that really smart kid who somehow is in high school at age 9, okay, that would be an outlier, something that is unexpected. All right, so let's look at the next page, and we're going to calculate some measures of central tendency. So we have our second hour quiz scores here, and we have our third hour quiz scores. And what we're, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the mean first. And I'm going to show you something on the calculator that uh, is a very easy mistake to make. So you'll start typing in 15 plus 17 plus 25 plus 17 plus 22. And then when you get to the last one, a lot of people will then divide by how many numbers there are. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You'll do this and you'll get 118 and you write that down. Um, that should give you or make you pause for caution because how could the average be 118 when all the numbers are no larger than 25? What happens is that up here, Order of operations is going to do 21 divided by 7 first and then add these numbers up. So what you want to do instead is hit enter, get your sum, and then divide by how many numbers there are. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, get 19.84. I'm just going to double check that I typed in all these numbers correctly because it's very easy to type um, one of these in wrong. Okay, we're good. And 19 point, it was 19.43. Now we're going to calculate the mean of third hour scores. So same idea. I want to type these in and then I'm going to press enter after I'm done and then
then divide by how many scores there were. And there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight scores. So 20.5. Now to calculate the median, we have to make sure the numbers are in order. So I'm going to do that for second and third hours. I'm going to put the numbers in order. And I like to cross them off as I write them down so I remember that I've gotten them all. And I'm going to do the same thing for second hour. So we have 16. Because again, with a list of numbers like this, it's very easy to um, miss a number. And if you miss a number and you're writing them in order, that's going to mess up the rest of the problem. Okay. So now the, the median of the first set so yeah, I like to cross off one on each side, and we get a median of 19. And then do the same thing for this third hour. And you see we're, we're stuck in the middle where, you know, which one of these is going to be the middle, 21 or 22? So what we'll have to do is do 21 plus 22 divided by 2 which is 21.5, and that is our median. And the mode, that is the uh, number that occurs most. So in first hour, sorry, second hour, our mode is 17. And in third hour, our mode is 22. Now, there is some way to get uh, this information from your graphing calculator. And here are the steps uh, in order to do it on your graphing calculator. And some of these steps might seem familiar from when we calculated linear regression and quadratic regression equations. And you can see you know, right here, oh, there's your linear and quadratic regression that we're uh, used to doing from earlier in the year. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this feature to do example number three. So we're going to find the mean, median, mode, and range of these scores. And we're going to write them down. So first thing we're going to do is input the data into our graphing calculator, so we're going to press the stat button and edit our list. And we have a 3, 4, 2, 1. OK, so our data is in our calculator. And we're going to calculate the values by pressing stat then over to calc and we want one variable statistics press enter and then calculate so the average is three that's what the x bar is our standard deviation is 1.15 so let's write this down first so our x bar was 3. Um, we want the median as well. So let's look at our information here again. Our median is also 3. the mode, so which value occurs most. Um, it looks like that is also 3. So 
the mode is 3. And then the range. So the range is going to be the highest value um, minus the lowest value. The highest value here is 5. And the lowest value is 1. So our range is 5 minus 1, which is 4. And then the standard deviation was 1.15. Right, then the next part says the winning score of the next game is an outlier 9. Find the new mean, median mode, range, and standard deviation. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the graphing calculator. We're going to edit our list, and we're going to add 9 to the bottom. And then press that. Go over to the one variable statistics. So then you can see how um, our values change. So the x bar or our, our mean is 3.6. Our median is still 3. Our mode is still 3. Our range, that's going to be 9 minus 1 which is 8, because 9 is now our highest score. And then our standard deviation, that was 2.11. So the existence of that outlier, that 9 um, points in the one game, really affected our standard deviation a lot, our range a lot, uh, but the median and mode, those were exactly the same. So this shows that you should really be looking at um, both types of statistics to really get an idea of your data. Because if you were just looking at the mean, median, and mode, that outlier didn't have that bit, that much of an effect on those three. So which measure of central tendency does the outlier affect the most? Well, that was... The, the range and standard deviation. Because remember, those two types of, stat of statistics are measures of central uh, measures of dispersion. Now with that outlier, our data it has a wider dispersion. We, we have a bigger range. Range deviation were affected the most, and median and mode were not affected at all. What effect does the outlier have on the range and standard de deviation? Um, it makes it it makes them larger. All right, so let's look at this last example. If you scored an eighty percent, a seventy-two percent, and a seventy-seven percent, what would you have to get on your fourth test in order for the average of all your tests to be an eighty percent? You guys do this all the time. You'll ask me, what do I need to get on the final so that my grade is this percent? This is how you can figure this out. So we have an 80%, 72%, 77% plus our last test. We don't know what that is. Divided by four tests. And we want this average to equal 80. So we need to solve this equation then. We're going to multiply both sides by 4. 
and then I'm going to combine like terms. I'm going to combine those three values, and that gets me 229 plus x equals 8 times 4 is 320. And then we subtract 229 from both sides. And then we get x equals 91. So you would need to get a 91% on your last test for your average to go up to an 80. Um, not impossible, but um, would take some work. So that's an introduction to our statistics. Uh, I hope that it was a good refresher for stuff like mean, median, and mode, and that the standard deviation was not too difficult. So make sure you smash that like button and subscribe. Bye.